So for the next couple of days, uh, I'm back in Panama City Beach, Florida. This will be our last trip here for just a little while, at least until spring break. And the next couple of videos are actually gonna be pretty interesting. I guess I kind of saved the best for last kind of thing. But today's video is gonna focus on what you see here behind me. This is Sea Lab. And today we are going to check out the Man in the Sea Museum in Panama City Beach, Florida. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Come on. This museum was constructed to uh, display the history of man wanting to explore the ocean. As you see, there are quite a few artifacts outside that we're gonna come back out to. They have a whole museum inside of this building that we're gonna check out first. As soon as you enter the door, they have this huge diving suit on this platform. Very reminiscent of that movie Men of Honor, starring Cuba Gooding Jr. Diving is the most dangerous job in the Navy. If it's lost underwater, the Navy diver finds it. If it's sunk, he brings it up. If he's lucky, he'll die young 200 feet beneath the waves, for that is the closest he will ever get to being a hero. And that was the true story. Everything in here was used in the sea. You can actually tell. And this is some heavy duty gear here. This contraption here, this is a hand powered compressor the uh the diver would have hoses coming out of his helmet that would hook into these spouts right here and there would be an operator up here that would turn this crank here operating the compressor here they have a record of, of the ways that man used to enter into the sea a long time ago like right here this is 1531 Here's another uh, diving bill. This was from 1616. 1690, they made it way larger, big enough for multiple people to fit. And then uh, more like a torpedo-ish type. This is around 1715. Over here, this is uh, 1797. This is more modern, made out of metal. It was invented by the Germans. From 1850, uh, depicting bridge workers. This is really cool. This is one of those powered units like you would see in a James Bond movie where he would hold on to it and carry him through the water. It's a very nice collection of diving helmets here. Back here on this wall in the back, they have a couple of really neat things for starters. We have this diving suit and then they have a complete submersible this is the diving suit they had mechanical arms they could use and be submerged in the water just like that there's a shot of one being lowered into the ocean Here's a more modern diving suit pictured here. That's it. There's not a whole lot to it, but it's really cool. The diver would sit in here. He didn't have to put his arms through the sockets, but he could have his arms in these sockets and could control these clamps to be able to pick stuff up and move around on the ocean. And then the legs would move as he walked. Here we have the beaver international underwater contractors something like this which it was actually known as alvin is what they used to find the titanic on the bottom of the ocean floor this is a submersible we can actually get inside of this this is going to be awesome this is the entrance hatch here 
Let's see if I can squeeze in. Oh man, that's a tight squeeze. We are sitting at an operator station inside of the submersible right now. From the operator's point of view, they, there would have been a monitor here in front of them and uh, these would have been connected to control it underwater, the engines and how it turned. These are ballast valves that go up and down once they submerge. It's really cool that all this is still intact. It's really cool to be able to get inside of here. That's a chore. That is very, very awesome piece of underwater machinery there. Amazing. Here we have a couple more of these heavy brass diving helmets on display. Over here they actually have a real, this is a hyperbaric decompression chamber. I don't know about you guys, but I couldn't do that. I would be extra claustrophobic being inside of that. Check this guy out here on the wall. This picture, a diver holding an MP40 submachine gun. Got to be a Navy SEAL. Oh, over here, there's a whole bunch of rebreathers. The shells have been taken off so you can see the inside of them. Here's a bunch of them over here. Look at that. That looks kind of futuristic space even. Here's another brass diving helmet. That one's even marked. United States Navy diving helmet, Mark V. This torpedo looking thing here, this is a bath thermograph. They would shoot this down under the water. It could go down up to 900 feet deep in the ocean and give them a temperature reading. It's like the front of a ship that has some artifacts here inside of it. It's a giant cannon and a real cannon that was unearthed out of the sea as well as some seashells and sponges. Here, you can take a photo opportunity by putting your head inside of this giant, heavy diver's helmet here. Do I look okay? We have entered an area right in the middle of the museum that's dedicated solely to Sea Lab. There were three Sea Labs Sea Lab 1, Sea Lab 2, Sea Lab 3. Sea Lab 1 is actually here on the property, and we're going to get to check it out in a few minutes. I don't know. I've got to Sea Lab 2 and Sea Lab 3 come afterward. This section here is for Sea Lab 1, which is right there in the back of that picture. This is when they surfaced. When they raised Sea Lab 1 out of the ocean, this was in 1980. It was abandoned down on the bottom of the ocean in 1964. It sat down on the bottom of the ocean floor unoccupied for 10 years before they raised it and restored it. After Sea Lab 1 came Sea Lab 2, an even bigger Sea Lab. They deployed Sea Lab 1 at 150 feet below the ocean surface. Sea Lab 2 went down 250 feet below the surface. Sea Lab 2 is no more. Because the cost of lead was so expensive, they tore Sea Lab 2 up and used it to create Sea Lab 3, which there is a model of Sea Lab 3 sitting here. Sea Lab 3 was to be deployed 600 feet below the surface. Obviously, uh, with each Sea Lab, they, were, they became bigger and better underwater pieces of equipment check out this old camera this is a nikon it was used by aquanaut bob barth when it was used for sea lab one right here next to the facade of a ship is an old cannon that was unearthed the uh the remains of an ancient ship that were found here off the coast of panama city beach we will now head outside Woo. The camera didn't like the exposure coming from that dark building to outside in the light. We are outside now and we will check out some of the machinery they have on display outside of the museum. Some of the stuff is really cool. 
We will save the best for last. This is C Lab One. This really cool contraption here. This is an underwater decompression chamber. So like the small decompression chamber that I showed you on the inside that I said I would be claustrophobic in. This is the same thing, but underwater, the diver would enter this machine. They would drain the water out under the water. The diver would then ride up to the surface in this decompression chamber to avoid having the bends. This crazy contraption here. I originally had no clue what it was. I had to ask this museum's curator. During World War II, this was an underwater minesweeper. So what would happen, it would be attached up here by a helicopter or to a helicopter. The helicopter would drop it, would lower it into the water, still attached, and the helicopter would move in front, like would travel in front of a ship searching for mines under the water thus saving any ships from being blown up by an underwater mine during world war ii up next is the famous yellow submarine from the beatles we all live in a yellow submarine yellow submarine yellow submarine now this one to me reminds me a lot of the navy seal underwater submersibles you know they would be in full diving gear underwater but inside of this thing and the hatch could even be open as they were riding and it would fit like up to four seals in one submersible they would uh ride in it to somewhere close to whatever location that they were going to where they would then exit leaving it on the bottom of the ocean they would go do their mission and then come back to it that's what it looks like to me i could be wrong though and actually, I'm 100% right, there's a plaque right here that says this is the Swimmer Delivery Vehicle. The Swimmer Delivery Vehicle, or SDVS, they're used by the U.S. Navy SEALs for missions that require transportation from a waypoint to the mission objective through the world's coastal waters. This one may not be used by the SEALs, but it basically is the same thing. And so is this one here. This is uh, what they call a personal transfer capsule. Now, this personal transfer capsule, it would be lowered from a ship with aquanauts inside of it or engineers already inside of it. It could be lowered way down deep into the ocean where those aquanauts would be tethered to that ship and they would do their research for how many ever hours and then the ship would raise them back to the surface they would not have to combat the bins. The uh, curator told me that it is actually open under here. <sighs> and it is. So we can see, here's the, here's the lower hatch. We can see what it would have been like working in this capsule down in the ocean. This giant structure here located right next to that one is basically the same thing but this one had different partitions almost like a space station underwater an underwater living station what made this underwater exploration vessel unique is much like the International Space Station it had separate components As you see here these two sections are not connected they could take this section and move it around to the back or they could move it right here and connect it or that section could come over here and connect and this section could go somewhere else and connect it could they could the sections could be moved all around and connected wherever they wanted to connect them on the bottom of the ocean floor that is it that is all of the items outside except for the main attraction here on the property we are now going to get to go inside of sea lab one you can tell you remember i told you that it was left abandoned under the water for 10 years and you can tell that it was under there for that length of time by looking at how the steel not in the greatest shape anymore they have fully restored sea lab to its original glory so on the inside of it it looks exactly how it would have looked in 1964 when it was first lowered into the gulf of mexico off the coast of Panama City Beach. 
here we are this would have been their sleeping quarters when they found it water had gotten inside and completely corroded it they went to work cleaning it up and fixing it here's uh -huh. a, you can see here's a picture of them restoring it this would have been where they entered and exited in and out of c lab and they tried to keep all this area the wet part of the lab right around the wall here this would have been their dive gear storage they would have entered through a hatch right here and come right up into an area where their toilet and their shower and all that was so they they tried to keep all this area the wet area before coming through the doorway into their kitchen area so they could make meals they were supposed to be under the water for 21 days they were only down there for 10. this is looking through Skylab all the way through it from one end to the other when they brought it up and this is it fully restored back to what it would have originally looked like they did a very good job restoring c lab one to look like c lab one when it originally went down into the water that is it for the man in the sea museum this place was really cool to see now we have at least one more day we're going to be here in panama city beach so i will see you again tomorrow from the white sandy beaches of panama city beach florida i want to thank you all for watching and i hope you have a great day please all of you stay warm